knew at 11 they were going out of the country to help a family in need until they got stuck here in Las Vegas when their passports were stolen. 13 Action News reporter Austin Carter is live at McCarran International Airport with what happened. Austin? Tom, members of this church group were set to take off aboard an Aeromexico flight from Las Vegas to Guatemala to help build a house for a deserving family. And unfortunately, some of those members were not able to board their flight today after their passports were stolen from their hotel room. Now, that church group from Utah came into town yesterday, spending the night at the Mardi Gras Hotel near Paradise and Desert Inn. The group getting some rest before flying out on a 10 day service trip to Central America, all to build a home for for a family of seven. Now, according to the group, they went out to breakfast this morning and came back to their rooms to find their stuff gone. Now, according to a police report, the crooks making off with a pair of beat headphones, cash and three passports. Two of those passports belonging to Alexa and Braxton Pierce, who wonder if the crooks would have stolen their things if they knew they were flying out to help a family who didn't have a roof over their head. It almost didn't seem real because we were about to go to the airport, get on the plane, and then we realized we couldn't do that anymore. I can't go and feel like I was a part of helping that family and those people bless their life. And so I guess it's just a missed opportunity. And the silver lining in all of this, there were uh, some of those group uh, church members uh, who did not have their passports stolen. They were able to uh, board that flight. They're on their way to Guatemala right now. But of course, Alexa and Braxton telling me that they just wish they could be there to help this family. Reporting live at McCarran International Airport, Austin Carter, 13 Action News. Across America today, teenagers led the charge in massive rallies from New England to California. Hundreds of thousands of people took part in the March for Our Lives to demand tougher gun control laws and an end to school shootings. Here's ABC's David Wright. Pennsylvania Avenue, the main street of American politics, today packed with people from the doorstep of the U.S. Capitol almost to the doorstep of the White House. Hundreds of thousands of people standing shoulder to shoulder to condemn gun violence. At the end of the day, bullets do not discriminate, so why should we? People Young people, including the survivors of Parkland, not even old enough to vote, led the way. When politicians send their thoughts and prayers with no action, we say no more. And to those politicians supported by the NRA that allow the continued slaughter of our children and our future, I say get your resumes ready. My friend and I might still be 11, and we might still be in elementary school, but we know, we know what is right and wrong. In New York City, protesters marched from Central Park to Times Square. ABC's Zachary Keish in the thick of it. Can this movement, can this march, your voice, can it be the difference, the catalyst? It has to be. We don't, we don't have a choice of whether it's going to be or not. It has to be the difference. In Parkland, Florida. In Texas and other deep red states, in California and other blue states, the crowds exceeded expectations. Some of the marchers have a personal connection to this issue. I'm from Newtown, Connecticut. So this issue hits close to home for you. It absolutely does. Now we're gonna sing it to you, y'all. Today, plenty of celebrities lent their talents and their voices to this cause. Among them, Paul McCartney in New York, who reminded the crowd how John Lennon was murdered. One of my best friends was killed in gun violence right around here, so uh, it's important to me. But it was the kids who took center stage, the emotional high point. Emma Gonzalez, a Parkland survivor, on stage for six minutes and 20 seconds, the amount of time it took the shooter to turn her community upside down. And people marched, chanted, and held up signs through the streets of downtown Las Vegas as well. Hundreds joined forces with the national movement to say enough is enough. We need sensible gun legislation. We're not out to take anybody's guns. We're just out to keep our kids safe. It's so good to see so many people that are in support of this and, and hoping for change. The National Rifle Association took to social media to slam today's massive protest calling for stricter gun control. On Facebook, the NRA characterized the movement as a sham organized by, quote, Hollywood elites and gun-hating billionaires. The Post accused those billionaires and elites of manipulating youth protesters in an effort to, quote, destroy the Second Amendment. 
Now we have a slideshow of photos from today's March for Our Lives event. Just head to our website at ktnv.com. Well, if you saw the lights of the Strip go dark tonight, there was a reason. It was all to recognize Earth Hour. It's the world's largest global movement to help highlight climate change. At 830, several properties turned off their lights or turned them blue to support the cause. Well, we saw a windy day across the valley. You're looking at those current gusts right now. Pretty uh, blustery, um, but it's supposed to warm up a little bit later this week. We want to go to uh, First Alert Meteorologist Carla Welga. Yeah, we have a number of things going on this week. Right now, though, the winds have eased off a bit in Las Vegas at the airport, specifically 25 mile per hour gusts, but they're still going strong. Nellis Air Force Base with 36 mile per hour gusts. That was one of the more blustery parts of town, and you can see sustained wind speeds still going strong there. Almost 30 mile per hour winds there, 24 in Henderson and 18 uh, in the Southern Highlands. So if you thought, well, tomorrow morning things will get a little better, well, a little, but we're still talking breezy winds even in the morning. Take a look, 9, 10 o'clock, still over 10 miles per hour. So I'm going to track those winds hour by hour for the rest of the weekend and the beginning of the work. We can tell you how cool it'll be and then how warm it'll get in your neighborhood later on in your 13 verse alert forecast. Warming up sounds good. Thanks, Carla. Well, new information tonight about the Reno student suspended after cursing in a call to his congressman's office. Noah Christensen called Congressman Mark Amade's office expressing his concerns over gun violence and the congressman's office then called the school who suspended him. The ACLU got involved saying the school district violated his right to free speech and yesterday the Washoe County School District said they would wipe his two-day suspension from his record. They also wanted to avoid the potential costs of a lawsuit with the ACLU. Mexican authorities say a family of four found dead on vacation in the country died from asphyxiation from inhaling toxic gases. The bodies of Kevin Sharp, his wife Marie, and their two children were discovered on Friday in a condo complex just a few miles away from the popular resort town of Tulum. There are no photos, no social media, no phone calls for investigators to rely on. The family missed a meeting with a friend and then never got back on their scheduled flight home to Iowa. When they didn't arrive, Last night, and we didn't hear anything, we started working, posting on social media, trying to figure out what we could do. Now, officials say the type of gas hasn't yet been determined. New developments in the deadly terror attack in France. The country paid tribute to a hero, police lieutenant, after he volunteered to trade places with hostages. Lieutenant Colonel Arnaud Beltram walked inside a supermarket unarmed, leaving his cell phone open so that police knew when to storm in and when to kill the attacker. Authorities say they found ISIS materials after they searched the gunman's apartment. Well, all eyes are on the president and his wife Melania in Mar-a-Lago ahead of tomorrow's 60 Minutes interview with Stormy Daniels. The adult film star is breaking her silence about the alleged affair with the president more than a decade ago. Here's ABC's Daria Albinger. At the end of another tumultuous week in the White House, President Trump threatened to veto the latest spending bill, forcing a government shutdown. He eventually signed the bill, but did tweet he would never sign another bill like this again. He then announced a revised ban on transgender service members. The directive says transgender persons who have had body dysphoria or require medication or surgery cannot serve, but it does give the Pentagon some discretion in the matter. However, this latest policy is still subject to an existing court order that blocks earlier attempts to ban transgender troops. The first family then traveled to Mar-a-Lago for the weekend, but the president will return to Washington on Sunday night, the same time the 60 Minutes interview with Stormy Daniels is scheduled to air. The former porn star is expected to reveal details and evidence of her alleged 2006 affair with Trump. I think what we're going to see come out of this is, one, we'll see the evidence, what evidence there is, but two, it continues to put unbelievable stress and time constraints on the president of the United States. The first lady will not be returning to D.C. tomorrow, Instead, she'll be a thousand miles away from her husband during the interview, staying in Palm Beach for their son Barron's spring break. Daria Albinger, ABC News, New York. Two school bus drivers in two separate terrifying incidents, both caught on camera. That's how the woman reacted after that has many people hailing them as heroes. Plus, car trouble can be a pain and it can happen at the most inconvenient times. However, we'll take a look at some gadgets that'll help ease your stress and hopefully save you some money. And count on Chopper 13 to bring you breaking news fast and first. We'll be right back. A man is rescued after becoming trapped between two buildings in Hawaii, and the attempt to rescue him was all caught on video. 
The incident happened in Honolulu. Witnesses say the man was bouncing a baseball on top of one of the buildings when he fell and got stuck in between the structures. After trying to rescue him with a rope, firefighters used drills, hammers and saws to cut through the wall and the rebar on one of the buildings to free him. The man was eventually rescued after more than three hours. He was taken to an area hospital in serious condition. Two dramatic school bus crashes. ABC's Ariel Reshef reports cameras captured not only the scary moments, but also the smart moves made by those bus drivers. Tonight, two South Carolina school bus drivers hailed heroes after two terrifying incidents. First, the frightening moments on this bus carrying special needs students, an 18 wheeler barreling towards it. I thought it was going to be very bad. Driver Tammy Cummings slamming on the brakes. You see her bracing for impact. As part of our training, if we see big vehicles coming towards us, to slow down. Listen to her immediately comforting the shaken kids. All of them walking away unharmed. Just two days later, another harrowing accident. A tree crashing down on this school bus. The unsuspecting driver stunned. Hey, are you all right? But quickly coming to the aid of her students. A mangled mess left behind. Miraculously, no major injuries. Officials tell ABC News both drivers followed safety protocol, immediately accounting for all passengers, calling for help, and safely evacuating. That was Ariel Reshef reporting. A Kansas City water park and its operator have been charged with involuntary manslaughter in connection with a 10-year-old's death. You'll remember back in 2016, Caleb Schwab died from a neck injury while riding the world's tallest water slide at the Schlitterbahn. Investigators say Caleb was somehow decapitated on the ride. It was closed indefinitely after his death. The street where a pedestrian bridge collapsed last week in Miami has now reopened. Crews spent days digging through the rubble, locating victims of the accident that killed six people. They then began clearing debris and fixing road damage caused by the tragic collapse. The Miami Herald reports officials asked callers on a telephone town hall meeting if they would support building another bridge or tunnel over the highway. 100% of them reportedly responded yes. Now to a consumer alert, almost 500,000 smoke alarms are recalled because they might fail. The affected units have manufacture dates between September 2016 and October 2017. Safety device brand Kitta says they were sold in the U.S. and Canada at Walmart, Amazon and the Home Depot. Kitta recommends looking through the opening on the side for a yellow cap. It will prevent smoke from reaching the sensors and activating the alarm. If no cap is present, the alarm can safely be reinstalled. Well, most of us have been there. You hear a funny noise coming from your car or the engine starts smoking, or maybe you just break down completely on the side of the road. Well, Scripps reporter Annie Taylor has been looking for some easy and inexpensive ways to take the worry out of a bad situation, saving you time and money and giving you peace of mind. Car trouble is the worst and it mostly happens at the most inopportune time. And if you're like me, you're probably not car savvy. That is why you should have one of these devices in your car at all times. You plug it in and it tells you what your check engine light is indicating. With those type of pieces of equipment, what they do is they tap into the onboard computer system of the vehicle and they retrieve what are a series of stored trouble codes or fault codes. Mechanic Dave Guthrie says this device can be beneficial when it comes to troubleshooting the problem, saving you both money and time. For example, if the fault code pertains or points to a faulty gas cap, it's probably less likely you're going to get stuck or have to worry about, you know, stopping your day to day and get it looked at immediately. The next device to always have in your car is a portable battery. How it works is you take the jumper cables, you place them on the terminal, and then you press this green button. Once that's done, you turn the car on and voila, you just jump started your car in 90 seconds. So those tools can be very beneficial, especially to the consumer. Quite frankly, a vehicle can have upwards of you know, a million moving parts, so that's a lot of potential things that can go wrong. Car trouble or not, Dave Guthrie says that you should take your car into the mechanic at least twice a year. Zanny Taylor reporting. Bank of America agrees to pay a $42 million fine for admitting to intentionally misleading investors about where trades took place. Authorities say the bank reprogrammed its electronic trading system to automatically doctor trade confirmation messages. Only institutional investors were the victims of this practice. Now, 13 first alert weather. Well, some pretty decent numbers.
numbers this afternoon. Take a look. 41 mile per hour gust north Las Vegas. That was the strongest gust here in the valley. Not far behind Nellis Air Force Base at 40 and Boulder City Southern Highlands both at 38. Tomorrow's numbers will be a little bit lower than that, but then they're going to come back up as we head into the work week. Nevertheless, there is a system a little clear at the beginning of the loop is sending a little bit of cloud cover our way, but we're not expecting uh, any chances for rain with the system. What we're expecting is, yep, you guessed it, more wind and still quite strong in some parts of the valley. Nellis Air Force Base with 29 mile per hour winds. These are sustained wind speeds. Henderson at 24 in North Las Vegas out of the southwest at 21 miles per hour. So even if you're going to be late Late night out in the late night and overnight hours uh, still going to be windy out there for you low into the windy category. Then by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, northern portions of the valley looking a little bit calmer. But take a look at the south close to 20 mile per hour winds. These are again sustained wind speeds by lunchtime numbers looking very similar and even a little bit stronger in Enterprise and Anthem uh, at McCarran close to 20 just below that at 18 miles per hour. And then at the 4 o'clock hour, you slowly start to see things relax a little bit. So by 8 o'clock, the south, we still have some breezy winds, including uh, some parts of North Las Vegas as well. Look at Centennial Hills, but overall a calmer picture. So here are the numbers as far as gusts are concerned over the next several days. Tomorrow, news as wind continues 30 mile per hour gusts generally around the valley. And then on Monday and on Tuesday, 35 mile per hour gusts, the system making a slow exit out of the valley. So slowly the winds are going to turn uh, to a northerly direction. So northern portions of the valley will We'll see the gustier conditions, I think, on both Monday and Tuesday. Unfortunately, the pollen matches the gusty winds because it's going to remain very high over the next couple of days. So if you have a cold, you stack allergies on top of that. I know definitely I'm in that group right now, if you can hear me. Uh, 57 degrees for central portions of the valley. North Las Vegas at 57. Green Valley Anthem at 55. Sunrise Manor at 58 degrees. Overnight, not terribly chilly, but some cold numbers in some parts. 46 in Anthem. Uh, 47 in Summerlin. Central portions of the valley will be closer to the 50 degree mark. Tomorrow we are going to shave a few degrees off of high temperatures. The system is pulling in cooler air as we speak. So mid 60s is generally the theme. Uh, 66 Henderson Boulder City Anthem coming in at 63 degrees. So if you're going to be outdoors tomorrow, do plan on those breezy winds. Uh, clouds for the first part of the day and then the winds will lighten up as we head into the evening hours. Uh, not the best day for boating, unfortunately, but if you are going to be doing any hiking, uh, keep in mind that it will be a chilly day both in Red Rock and Mount Charleston. 13 first alert, seven day planner up uh, below average temperatures for the next several days, but then high pressure moves in and take a look mid 70s, upper 70s on Wednesday, Thursday, and then yep, 80 degree mark both Friday and Saturday. So if you like the warmer temperatures, definitely something to look forward to. Bye. 80 degrees sounds good. Thanks, Carla. The Golden Knights lost a game on the road in Denver today. They fell to the avalanche in a shootout two to one. The loss prevented the Knights from clinching a playoff spot. It was also goaltender Mark Andre Fleury's first game back after sustaining an injury on Tuesday. 13 Action News is teaming up with Nevada Job Connect to let you know about employment opportunities around the valley. There's an opening for a shift manager with at least six months of related experience. Pay for that is $9 an hour. Also an opening for a commercial driver. You must have a valid Class A CDL license and at least two years of experience. Pay for that is $21 an hour. And there's an opening for a plumber with at least a year of experience. For more information on these and other job openings around the valley, just look for ktnv.com slash jobs. Well, Easter comes early to the valley. Dozens of kids and their families celebrated the annual bunny hop today at Tivoli Village. There was a big Easter egg hunt and the Easter bunny, of course, was also there for the fun. If you're looking for some Easter related events around the valley, we have a list of that as well on our website at ktnv.com. Breaking the law to get a better credit score? How scammers are making innocent consumers look like criminals. And don't forget to download KTNV Mobile. It's in the App Store and Google Play. It's free unless you watch 13 Action News video anywhere you have mobile service. If you want your credit score to be better, be careful. Scammers can do more than just steal your information. They can also make you look like a crook. Here's 13 Action News anchor Trisha Keen. When trying to make a financial decision for the future, it's often financial decisions from the past that can trip you up. From buying a car to buying a home, lenders can see your decisions in a credit report, and some scammers see an opportunity. According to the Federal Trade Commission, there are a few easy ways to spot a credit repair scam. 
First, if the company asks for payment before they render any services. Also, if they ask that you do not contact the credit reporting agencies directly. And if they suggest giving false information when applying for a mortgage or a loan. Another troubling trend among credit repair scammers, the promise of an entirely new credit identity, which can unwittingly land a consumer in trouble with the law. You can spot these scams when a service suggests abandoning a social security number as a primary source of identification. And instead of using a new number, they assign and call a CPN for credit privacy number or credit profile number. In many cases, these numbers are stolen social security numbers, often from children, which is why they have a clean credit slate. This act can turn a consumer unknowingly into an identity thief despite their good financial intentions. A boy in need of a life-saving treatment finally gets the good news he's been waiting for and is delivered to him with the help of a character from a galaxy far, far away. A die-hard Star Wars fan got the best news of his life from Chewbacca. His doctor promised he would dress up as the character when they found him a heart transplant. ABC's Mallory Gillikin shares this heartwarming story. Austin Eggleston knows that a visit from Chewbacca means only one thing. Do we seriously have a heart? That's Austin's cardiologist, Dr. Philip Thrush, in the Star Wars costume. He had promised Austin that when a donor heart became available, Chewbacca would be the one to tell him. This moment is huge for these kids, and if I can make it perfect for them, why wouldn't I? It's a chance at life for him. It's, it's a, a chance that we've been waiting for for so long. Austin was admitted to Lurie Children's Hospital and listed as a candidate for a heart transplant back in November. While he waited, he looked out for the other young patients. He made it his business to make sure he knew who was here, uh, what was going on with them, reach out to families and try and make sure that if there's anything he could do, he was like a little mayor. <laughs> Dr. Thrush showed off his impressive vocal skills again today as he paid another visit to Austin, who gave us the thumbs up after his successful surgery. Amazing story there. That was Mallory Gillikin reporting. Well, the movie Black Panther continues to rack up milestones. Its latest accomplishment, it's now the top grossing superhero film of all time in North America, not accounting for inflation. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Black Panther passed 2012's The Avengers today to become the number one all time in the superhero genre. And Variety reports that the film should reach the $630 million mark at the box office this weekend. That would make the film the fifth highest grossing movie in U.S. history behind only Star Wars The Force Awakens, Avatar, Titanic, and Jurassic World. Well, Carla has a final check of your forecast, and right now, here's a live look out of the valley on this beautiful Saturday night. You're watching 13 Action News, where we bring you breaking news fast and first. Stay with us. Good-looking 31st alert, seven-day planner. Yes, below average temperatures over the next couple of days, some nuisance wind, but things will be looking up if you like the warmer temperatures. Uh, 75 degrees on Wednesday, and we will be right around the 80-degree mark by the end of the week. 80 degrees. Why not celebrate with fireworks? There's a competition for everything. Thousands watched fireworks for the ninth Philippine International Pyro Musical Competition. Pyrotechnic experts from around the world showcase their talents. The grand winners were from Germany and the United Kingdom. The Philippines didn't compete, but as you saw, they performed a cool fireworks exhibition there. So that's Channel 13 Action News Live at 11. We're always on at KTNV.com, our mobile app, Roku channel. From all of us here at Channel 13, have a good night and thanks for watching.